Hello guys, how are you? The code Tolik is here. In this video, we're going to talk about models. Models are part of MVC architecture. They are basically responsible for uh, getting and saving data and they also uh, have business data and logic. So in this video, we're going to see how to create a model, how to work with a model attributes, attribute labels, how to write validation rules and run the rules and how to see how we can massively assign multiple attributes with a single statement. Okay, so let's start and let's create first model. So here we already have models which comes with E2 basic version, but I'm not going to talk about them right now and I'm going to create a new model called test model. So uh, in order to, you to create a model, you need to extend it from the eBase model class. Okay, so eBase model, here it is the user statement. We have already created model and let's now work with attributes. Let's create a couple of attributes like public name, public surname and public email. Okay, so we have attributes. Let's go to the controller and create an action right here, test. And let's create an instance of the test model right here. So here it is. Uh, we can assign attributes in two ways uh, when working with models. So we can assign attributes with object notation like um, test then the arrow and the name is John or we can do it in an array notation so we can do even test surname is do okay and let's just save this and see the result in the browser of course we don't see anything because we don't output anything but if we don't see a warning or error, it should be good. Okay, we can we can output if you want, like um, test surname. Okay, so let's go to the site slash test, and here is do. So we see that it works fine. If we want to see all attributes of the model, we can simply call the method attributes on the model, which will return an associative array. Not associative, but normal array, name, surname, and email. In a framework, every attribute has its associated label, a display text. So whenever we are about to render the model as attributes in the form, we should use this label. By default, if we don't specify the label, uh, a framework automatically converts the attribute name into its corresponding label. Let me write get attribute, get attribute label and pass here a one attribute name like uh, like name. OK, so and let's look in the browser and here is its corresponding uh, label. So and the name is uh, in uppercase. If attribute name uh, contains multiple words like public my age let's put it camel case and let's go to the site controller and put here my age as an attribute name here it is the its corresponding label so basically uh, first letter of every word is converted into uppercase and space is inserted between every words but if we don't want to uh, to have this default uh, label labeled for every attributes, we can simply override it. So we need to create here method public method attribute labels and we need to return an associative array from this method where key is the attribute name and the value is its corresponding label. Okay, so like the name is um, enter your name, for example, and the age is your age okay and whenever we we're about to get the attribute label for name uh, or age 
the following text will be used. But for other attributes, the default rule will work and the attribute name will be converted into its corresponding label. Okay. Let's let's test this and here put uh, get attribute label for name. Let's go to the browser and here it is. Enter your name. Let's put it for surname and the default rule works for it. Okay, so here I have created model and assigned four attributes to it. Now I want to iterate over my model. And basically this is also possible in uh, e framework because the tests mo the models basically are iterable objects. So here it is. So basically we iterate over the object and print all values like John, age, Doe and so on. And we also printed their corresponding attribute labels. And we can also print the attribute itself to see the difference. Okay, here it is. So the attributes, their corresponding labels and the values. Let's talk about the rules. Let's go to the test model and create rules. So rules are basically for validation data. And in order to create rules, we need to create public method rules and return an array from these rules. And each entry of this array is a rule associated to one or more attributes. Okay, so let's create rules. So like a uh, name is required. Okay. So when we were, when we are about to validate the model data, so the name will be considered as required. Let's go to the site controller and run a validate method on the model and let's comment this name. So we don't want to, the name to be supplied. So we want to see the validation problem. Like if the validation was run successfully, let's just output OK. Otherwise, output error. OK, let's see the page. And here is error. Let's comment this. And here we see error. And if we want to see the validation errors basically what happened why it's an error we can dump we can see the whole validation errors by dumping the model and the errors property and here it is the error and the validation error says basically name enter your name cannot be blank so this enter your name basically is the attribute label so it takes the attribute label and then it's some text cannot be blank uh, so multiple rules can be applied to the same attribute like on the model. So it can be required and it can be also like a string with minimum 10 and maximum 20 or something like this. That's why here it's an array. And if multiple validation rules were applied to it and all of them failed, we will see multiple messages for the attribute. Okay. Now let's see how we can make multiple attributes required. So the rule pattern is the following that the it's an, it's an array and the first entry of this array is the attribute label or labels uh, on which the rule is applied. The second element of this array is the rule identifier and then we can add some additional uh, properties of the rule like message for example. Okay, so my bad message. Uh, corresponds to some text like uh, please enter your name so this is basically the message which will be displayed if uh, the rule was not satisfied and let's see in the browser and here it is please enter your name each rule has its own attributes and you can specify it right here but i'm not going to spend more time on rules um, i plan a separate video for this mm -hmm. so by the way if you like my videos hit the subscribe and the bell button and just wait for more okay and let's apply this required rule for multiple attributes like name and let's do it for surname also so name and surname let's open in the browser and it doesn't change simply because the surname is provided in the site controller here it is so let's comment this surname also and refresh the page and we see the same validation rule on surname also
So if you if all uh, data was provided and the validation rules are satisfied, we will see just OK. And when the validation is OK, we can save the data, we can do some actions or we can if it's a contact form, we can just send an email. Really often the data which comes uh, from the user uh, using the post request maybe is it's an associative array. OK, and we want to assign this data to a model. So that's why the uh, framework gives us possibility to uh, have a batch assignment to multiple attributes. So we can, let's say that this is the post data, okay, or we can we can do it like uh, like this. So the test attributes is a global post, just like this. So and if the post has name, surname, email, and age inside it. Uh, it will assign it, okay? And let's uh, let's just change this into post and create this associative array. So here is my associative array, and and I am assigning to the attributes. And let's see the validation result in the browser. It's okay, which means that the name and surname were provided according to the rules. Otherwise, it would just uh, would not pass the validation. That's it for now guys, thanks for watching, thumbs up, subscribe, share, provide a comment and see you in the next time.